G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our back steps. Uh, just here behind me we've got a Kajari melon. Uh, it's a little Indian sweet melon, a bit like a rock melon so I've been told. Now the other day Kira came in and she told me she saw a couple of those pesky little Queensland fruit fly zapping around here. Uh, so I came out and had a bit of a look and I found a couple of the smaller fruit were absolutely crawling with these little blighters. Oh actually they're maggots I should say, they're larvae. Now these little things they can pretty much will decimate a fruit in you know three or four days if there's enough little eggs deposited in them. Um, we've had really bad problems with them in the past on our large tomatoes, our large table sized tomatoes when we want to grow them outside during the warmer weather. Uh, also things like um, pumpkins, we've had them um, blow pumpkins, when I mean blow I mean pop their little ovi depositor down through the flesh and lay their eggs. Also had problems with them on the mangoes if we leave them on the tree too long um, they end up depositing their eggs in there as well but then again with the mangoes we've got to fight the possums and the flying foxes for them anyway so um, yeah what I thought I'd do is I'll just bring you along and we'll cut open this larger melon just behind me here and we'll see if we can find any of the little blighters in there so you might be able to make out a couple of small little suspect marks just down the base here and I'm fairly sure that's where a fruit fly has blown it so what we might do is we might just chop her off and we'll cut her open and see what we can find Pretty much we'll just go straight down the middle I think and yep there we go there's the evidence right there so you can see the damage to the flesh and there's one of the little blighters right there so yeah this fruit probably would have been decimated in the next day or so. Um, what I might do is I might just chop this open and see if we can get a better look at some of them over here in this bit I know there's going to be a load in here just by the amount of um there we go, there's one big one down there, one down the side. They tend to um, run for cover when you open them up. Oh, here we go, there's a bit of a mother load in there. So, yeah, this, this fruit here didn't stand a chance in reality. Uh, these guys here, I'm not too concerned about them, you know, uh, jumping away and going on the ground down under the stairs, mainly because they're not large enough or mature enough to pupate into fruit fly yet. I'm pretty sure the ants and the little skinks down there would polish them off quick smart. There you go, one just flicked himself onto the camera. So these little fellas here are the reason why we don't grow our large tomatoes through the warmer weather. Uh, we pretty much all stick to the small cherry tomatoes. I have seen these guys, or the adults I should say, try and uh, deposit eggs in the small cherry tomatoes. But I think it's because the fruit is so small, it makes the skin a little bit too tough for the um, female to get her ovi depositor through. So they just can't actually penetrate the skin of the small cherry tomatoes. Um, I've seen them blow mangoes, I've seen them blow pumpkins and also cucumbers. So for these guys it's pretty much all open season on any of the sweeter fruit that we grow in our backyard. So we've used a few different methods to try and control these destructive blighters. Um, originally we used homemade uh, bait traps, uh, they didn't work out too well for us. I've heard there are a few different uh, mixtures you can use, the one we tried just didn't work too well. Um, also too we have used the commercial bait or lure and bait ones, they use a pheromone to um, attract the males in and then the males die off no males, no fertile females or fertilized females. And the third one was a, um, a bait and poison. So it was something we painted onto a tree or pieces of timber boarding around the place. Uh, the fruit flies were attracted to it, uh, consumed it and then died. Uh, unfortunately, none of those methods really worked too well for us. The best um, way that we've been able to keep them from the veg is excluding them either through the hoop house we have set up down the back or these little exclusion bags I've got just over my shoulder here. Now uh, with the hoop house at the moment we've got our sweet peppers or capsicums in there and a jalapeno chili also got a section of the pumpkin vine in there, a watermelon and a tomato plant. So hopefully all those things will be able to, um, a zucchini as well, I don't know if I mentioned that, all those things will be protected from the Queensland fruit flies. Um, the tomato and the capsicums, because they're um, self-fertile, they've got perfect flowers, um, they'll pollinate themselves, so that's not a huge concern. 
the watermelon zucchini and the pumpkin they've all got imperfect flowers a bit like this melon so you have male flowers and female flowers so I just have to duck in there and um, you know play a bit of Barry White and get the job done for them just move the pollen around from the male to female flowers also too we do have ants in the hoop house so it's quite likely that the ants will do the job for us crawling from the different flowers to collect pollen so these little exclusion bags are really easy to put on these ones here I got from Ray and Kerry thank you very much folks uh, they're just a little stocking style paint strainer bag I'm just slipping them over the fruit themselves and then securing it with a couple of bag those little wire bag twist ties and that'll keep them in place and stop the fruit fly from getting in there and depositing their eggs within the fruit I'm just trialing these ones at the moment I haven't used them before um, they are a fairly thick stocking material so hopefully the uh, female won't be able to get her ovi depositor through and into to the fruit so it's something I'll be monitoring over the next few weeks uh, if it doesn't work out too well I do have my original uh, mesh bags that keeps the little blighters out so I'll knock them on so there are ways we can control them in fact I pretty much will think exclusion is the best way to go for us personally because we do have a small patch and if we were to have you know loads of bait stations around I'd be out there every week topping them up emptying them out and that sort of thing uh, with the hoop house and the exclusion bags once the fruit is protected or covered with the bags or the plants are growing in the hoop house you're pretty much well laughing you don't have to worry about any of the flies getting in as long as you make sure to close the door all the time Robert so elsewhere in Australia we also get the Mediterranean fruit fly um, that uh, I think they use different baits and lures for those ones so you might want to check that out if you're down south or in Western Australia where those guys are an issue um, I think the pheromones may be species specific I'm not too sure on that you're going to have to check it out yourself uh, but by all means you know go the exclusion if you're not going if you don't want to worry about the bait and lure and traps and that sort of thing um, I find it works really really well um, for everyone else in the world uh, you know you may not have the Queensland fruit fly but there are other, are other fruit fly pest species that you may get and you might want to look into um, either exclusion or um, locally made or sourced baits and traps that are specific to the species that you have issues with uh, by the way I'm not talking about those little pesky fruit flies you get buzzing around the kitchen whenever you've got some overripe bananas or apples on the bench uh, these guys are very very devastating species they can wipe out whole commercial crops so if you have enjoyed the clip and you want to see more of these little backyard farming style clips land in your email inbox you can click on that little subscribe icon down there and check the little bell box when it appears and you'll be sent an email whenever we upload a clip to our YouTube channel you can come along and suss it out I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and I will catch you next time cheers all have a great one Probably enough to sufficiently gross people out, I think. Yeah.